Hello everybody, that's here, very happy to see all of you on other side of the screen. I was playing quite a bit of game lately and which created big backlog of the videos which I want to talk about. So during the holiday season I step on my throat and actually I will try to catch up with a few videos that I want to share with you. Today video I would like to talk about future of chip cooling and water cooling specifically. Uh, it, I did a small research and it was prompted by watching J2Sense video a few months back which was titled something like is this end of water cooling and I was thinking like how this could be when any serious data center is now liquid cooled so like no so but after watching the video I figured out that Jay was actually talking about very niche computer enthusiast market which is represented by 10 companies and maybe 10,000 people so we're not talking about like general industry thing but that prompted me to look up what's going on with cheap cooling technology in general because eventually things which is created for enterprise or sometimes military applications they found their way to consumer market so we might get something out of it and that's what i would like to have a quick chat today so first thing i would like to talk about that even in my head there's some notion exists that uh, chips became small and more efficient less energy and maybe cooling not required while it's partially true for some devices like cell phones became more and more powerful or tablet using the chips that can easily cooled with a passive type of the cooling solution it's far from true to any more advanced computer and even gaming computer like mine or yours is just can be cooled passively efficiently or you need some radiator of humongous size so this notion not true in fact the problem actually escalating lately and the reason for this is the fact that we're actually reaching a watershed between two cheap technologies that existed and now it's coming in and it's happening actually this year and next year literally so so far the most of the advances in chip technology was related and we have crammed more and more transistors on the same square millimeters space on silicon waffle and this technology was called the uh, fin fat where essentially you, you keep shrinking and shrinking transistors to the level that now we almost reached the atomic level which we kind of surpass and it was a brief period when I heard some people saying okay what we're going to do what we're going to do because we can't shrink anymore and solution actually exists so now we going into not shrinking the chips on the same surface we actually start going to stack them up so the chips will go to the technology called GAA and it called gate all around when we have stuff getting up so the silicon will became very high densed in a two dimensions but also it started going up in the third dimension so it became three dimensional and this created a huge heat dissipation problem so far even with this existing fin fat technology when we have like basically flat type of the setup that i just mentioned we already have to implement things that um, called black silicon maybe some of you heard about it i actually didn't so essentially the heat dissipation on the chip itself is so high right now that it's actually interfere with the chip function so clever people who could designing chips invented the technology to shut down certain transistor on the chip in a certain pattern and that allows chip to cool off and then you kind of switch back and forth this is allows you to a little bit managing heat production while continue operate the chip so black silicon was already implemented in existing technology when if you go up then actually it became even worse another thing that also happening and it's it will continue happening in the future is uh, multi-layered or stacked microchips for example like Threadripper chip or processor essentially has a like core is one chip and you have um, 
cash on top of it, which is basically like cheap on chip technology. Again, sandwiching multiple silicon on each other also create a heat. So the problem with heat do exist and will continue into the future and also will probably be getting worse as we're going three dimensional type of the design. So what was happening with trying with general solutions try to address it. So I found a few. So one is um, actually was floating for quite a while and it uh, was a number of research that done for the actually trying to water cool the chip itself when you essentially groove a water channel right on the silicone itself and try to put certain amount of liquid through it. It's actually pretty efficient and I think the one of the first uh, attempts was way back like 2000 uh, beginning of 2000s like 2008 or 9 it wasn't really successful but it was more was like a scientific exercise but it was done for a while it just never was created commercially in 2021 TCMC which is big powerhouse also started doing some research into this area so far I couldn't find any practical implementation of it but there's some heavy waiters actually looking to the solution and maybe it will be accelerated with moving from Fintech to GAA technology because you actually have to look into that. So maybe we'll see something that will maybe we'll get some sort of chips with the ports on it and we actually put a certain amount of liquid through it. Who knows but this is quite possible. Another thing that also was research, which is similar to water cooling, that actually put like heat pipes inside of the silicone itself. As it was a few researchers, didn't went as far as liquid cooling as I understand, but I think that if anything will happen, maybe heat pipes will be less preferable than liquid cooling because it's less efficient. But this was another way that also was a try to attempt to that matter. Another thing that I discovered that there's a company called, called Fabric 8 Labs that decided to make 3D printed heat sinks which is essentially an intricate type of the maze with an enormous surface because it's not just the grooves which is milled on a piece of metal it's actually like a sort of architectural thing that liquid going through. In fact, it is even one commercial product that was presented at the last trade show in Taipei in the summer. Asatec created a liquid all-in-one unit with this type of 3D printed heat thing. I personally foresee a little bit of problem with those ones because while the idea is actually pretty cool, I think that um, the problem with the debris that eventually always happening inside of the water cooling loops can actually become a big problem and uh, those 3d printed heat sinks if they will be small enough can be very easily clogged and i don't quite see any solution here except maybe put like full-blown filter as a part of not mesh filter and like actual filter like um you will have in the cars that actually will filter very small particles in order to allow this type of 3d printed heat sinks to exist but who knows maybe we we'll start seeing like huge water blocks which a big mesh inside that uh, low restriction and a lot of water coming through this uh, metal mesh and it actually can take a lot of heat away who knows so maybe we'll see a little bit advantages here and the last factor that i found out that probably will be or may actually will be a driving factor for advances in water cooling I figured out that how data centers is now cooled it's quite often it's immersed water cooling when the entire board is sitting inside some, some sort of chemicals and there's a big problem with those chemicals apparently they have a nickname they call forever chemicals because they never degrade and when they get dumped the, they will stay for thousand years without any change so they like as worse for environment as it gets and surprise surprise European Union and US actually going to ban them in 2025 so you can't create or use those chemicals that you use for cooling 
those big data centers moving forward. So what's the solution? You have either do some sort of existing water cooling with blocks and stuff like this, or I don't know, blow hole, uh, AC air through them, trying to push as much air cooling as you can, who knows. But there's an actual problem, and where the actual problem exists, for the big businesses, usually they react. So we might see some advances coming out in 2025 and beyond, because the certain technology is just banned for environmental reasons. So that's what I found and I thought to share with you. If you have any more insight, I'm pretty sure that some of you might be even have a deeper knowledge that Am I? So feel free to put it in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I see you soon in the next video.